Hi, welcome to Wooden Stuff Workshop. It's a bit breezy out here today. Let's get in the workshop and get some jobs done. First off, I've just to let you know, I've decided to keep this uh, electronic drill. I'll uh, give it a try. I've just made a quick bench there out of a bit of old pine that was kicking this about outside next to the wall and also screwed to the floor so that's nice and uh, stable just there and it's all bolted down as well through the top but yeah i'll uh, be able to make use of it um right let's get in here oh by the way if you're wondering what that is it uh i'll use it for focusing in on me because of i'm using a different phone now for filming um i can put that where i'm gonna be focus up and then lock it in place because otherwise the focusing it just keeps auto focusing backwards and forwards so first job i'm going to do is i'm trying to make or figure out how i'm going to do it let's take this lock off now there you go uh i'm trying to figure out how i'm going to do a surround for that hourglass but the wife uh just wants a really simple surround around that but she doesn't want anything to distract from this so it has to be simple and not covering a lot. That's the idea. So I've got some maple here. So yeah, I've been thinking about this for ages, but I still don't know really what I'm going to do. So that's why I'm going to put you on time lapse because I think there'll be a lot of figuring out and thinking to go on while I'm doing this. these rings of maple cut out I'm just making it up as I go along the easiest way to do this would be just to have some big 
round flat rings that are going wide enough to uh, have the uprights going underneath them like that but I don't have uh, maple big enough to go further out but not only that the wife wouldn't like that if it's too wide on here so uh, she might not like this yet but I'll give it a go I might see I'll see if I've got a router that I can take a bit of a hollow out of here so I can get it closer to the glass uh, closer in with the radius of the glass obviously I'll have to leave a bit of a gap between the glass and the wood just for any movement so that uh, don't break the glass find a cutter to put a bit of a curve in there but it looks like I haven't got a cutter to do that which is unbelievable because I got some cutters here and some cutters down there and I thought I'd have had something like but never mind I think what I might try is that I'll uh, put a dovetail cutter in And then run it, uh, run this through halfway like that. So I'll run it through there, and that'll be taking out a piece going into the middle. I don't know if you can see there. And then I flip it over, and then take it through there, and it'll just take out a little piece out the middle. It means I can get it further into closer to the glass. Uh, the hourglass but like I said I keep putting you on time lapse because I don't know what I'm doing so I can't really show you what I'm doing because I'm just making stuff up as I go along loads of simple hourglass cages that we could have uh, made and then we'd be able to go through all the steps of making them and I've even seen one what was it on epic works where they put it together and it's all carved and everything and uh, I fancied doing that but the wife don't want that, she wants something really simple. Right, so back on time lapse and uh, I'll get doing this.
taking ages to do something so simple but uh, what I'm doing now just trying to figure out the length of these to chop them off I'm going to give it a, a few millimeters in distance so it's not tight up to the glass and then I will dowel through these joints because I need what I need to do is make it so it comes apart because I've got to for a start show the wife see if she approves of it for me to carry on with it and then what I'll have to do is I'll have to because uh, I think I'm going to antique wax this I'll have to wax some of the bits that I won't be able to get to when the glass is on so for a start I'll get the distance of this we'll chop it off and then uh, get dowel in these to hold it all together then I can pull it apart then when I, uh, if I get the go ahead, it can all be finished and glued on. Very noisy but uh, at least I've got some nice clean holes there loosely together just with dowels just care gently in it all needs gluing up and knocking together properly but I've got to go now and see if this is uh, acceptable for the wife you know if it let's go and find out with partly good news so that's okay just wants these bits thinner so I've got to try and do something with these to make them thinner that's fair enough right yeah I can't believe how long it's been taking to do this so uh, I've got that glued up now I've got tight strong elastic bands going round top and the bottom holding it all together this is glued and doweled in and then I'll trim them dowels off afterwards so yeah what i've done i've waxed because the wife wants it at just a waxed finish 
So I've waxed all the parts on the inside that I can't get to and then I can finish this on the outside afterwards. Um, so I've made these thinner there so they're at the full size they were up the top there then they go in, go in, then down then back out again and I took some off the thickness of them as well. So uh, that's a bit better now. They're not so bulky. But yeah, hopefully that'll be alright. So we'll let that set overnight. And then I'll uh, finish it off tomorrow. What other things that I need to get on with? I've got this that I never finished. So this is another treasure chest. I was just trying to do it the new way of mitering, so I've got it all in there. I need to run it on my uh, jig that I've got for that circular saw, so I can put the splines in the corners. Got my pewter Haspen staples here, ready to go on it. And then I just bought a little padlock. I just got like a grey padlock like that to go on it. Figuring out how to do the top different to how I used to do them. So I'm not sure whether to put a rebate on there. Because what I do, I have thin slats that go across. And that's what goes around making the uh, arch on the top there. But yeah, I'm not sure with that. So I want to get that finished completely. I can hear the cat rattling on the door. I've still got the daughter's centerpiece for the coffee table to do because the log i chopped off two pieces of the log and took one inside and that split because it was you know too much of a change but one of them i kept in here so i think that one's still okay but i'll have a look at that because i might need to get out my beast of a router out there to try and route out the middle of it So yeah, I think I might call it, I might uh, leave it for today then, just let that set and then I'll come and finish that tomorrow. So I'll just get all these tools packed up and then I can start afresh tomorrow, can't we? We can start afresh tomorrow. Right, hi, it's the next day. So the uh, hourglass has had overnight to dry. The glue on that, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. I just went to our local DIY store. Well, it's not It's not a DIY, it's like a little DIY shop, but it has everything. Got some new uh, belts for my cheapo sander, belt sander and popped into Aldi and got some of these storage bins. My idea is to, instead of having screws in boxes everywhere, I might find somewhere for these to go and put the screws in. That's easier said than done because uh, I haven't really got a lot of wall space anywhere. But I'll sort something. Right, so let's carry on with this hourglass and get that done. So like I said, this has been gluing overnight. So hopefully that'll be okay. I've also bought some little rubber, the little rubber cushions that you put behind um, kitchen doors, stop them banging. I bought a few of them, the little rubber dots and because I've got in there, in between this glass, I gave it a little bit of movement. And what I'm planning to do is see if I can put the rubber dots just in there to hold it. But we shall see if I can get them in. 
Now what I've made this, but the idea of this is so that we can put it on the mantelpiece and uh, it was supposed to give it a bit of protection from this creature, from this creature knocking it off the mantelpiece, but I don't think this is going to uh, save it one little bit. So I don't know how long this uh, hourglass is going to last. Right, I've got it all sanded up then, ready to finish waxing it. So uh, there's the joints, how I put it into the ends there. So they've all got joints sitting inside into this ring a little bit, and then they're doweled through. I'm glad the wife got me to uh, narrow these off and make them thinner that way. So, how she wants it, nice and simple. So now let's just finish it with the wax. That's it, job done, we finally got there. So I'll show you that in a second. So this is what I use, Brywax P7. P7 medium brown, so Brywax original. That's the wax I use, just put it on. that job done it's sat there on the mantelpiece I don't know how long it'll be before the cat knocks it off but looks okay there so for my daughter I've still got to do the candle holder for the center of a coffee table so this is the uh, piece that I took inside not surprisingly it started splitting that's because of the temperature change uh, moisture change from outside to go and into the house but i've got another one down here as well so this was cut at the same time but this one i left here 
in the workshop. So let's have a look at this one. Let's just test it with my moisture meters. So, my so moisture yeah, this is the one I bought off the internet. It says Forest Master and it's useless. But, so then I bought another one from Audi, the Ferrex one. And I think they're all useless. But the idea is that I use the two to sort of uh, guesstimate what the moisture level is. So let's have a look what this says for this. So that says 18% at that. That's a 16% in the middle. So this Ferrex one, let's have a go with that. That says 15.656, keeps moving about. 13 point, oh, no, 14.3, 16.3. What I'm going to do is belt sand the top of this because I at least want to get round the edges, uh, round the edges there before I route her in there. So then I've got or to sit the belt sander onto. That's my plan anyway. Right, I'm gonna get out my beast of a router. my old router. Go, it's a Bosch GOF 1700 ACE. So I suppose that'll be 1700 watt. Do you reckon I can hang on to this with a 19 millimeter cutter in it? I'll have a go, but I'm going to need to. Uh, Gonna need to clamp that down. about there where I want to be just take a load of cleaning up to do like this and like all this so yeah I think uh, I think I might call it a day and uh, I'll go and get rid of this and get in the shower and I'll tidy up all this tomorrow but yeah I think that'll be it for this video so thank you very much for watching. I'll carry on with stuff in the next video. So uh, if you liked it, if you could give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And uh, I'll see you next time. So take care.